guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Becca, and today I have Becca's Book Off Lee round 31. guys are unfamiliar with Bookopoly, this is the TBR game that I play every single month. I roll two six-sided die and move around the board. Each space has a prompt and I have to pick a book to fit every prompt. So if this is the first time that you are seeing Bookopoly, I will put a link to January's round up here so you can check out the rules and get a full tour of the board. And I will also have the full Bookopoly playlist linked in my description box. But for those of you who know what's going on, let us have a look at how I did with June's TBR. So on June's TBR, we had seven books. We had Take a Hint, Danny Brown for a romance, Golden Fool for a fantasy, Battle Royale was Other, Sight Witch by Susan Dennard was Most Recent Purchase, Rat Queens Volume 5 was Another Fantasy, Born by Jeff Vandermeer was a viewer recommendation, and we had an e arc which was Nation of the Sun by H.R. Moore, which was a book I had to read for review. Now out of these seven, I have read four of these. However, June was a terrible month for me. There was a whole series of events that was very stressful. I have read probably around half of what I would normally read in a month, which sucks because I was co-hosting a readathon as well. So for this month, we are not taking a punishment due to extenuating circumstances, and we are just going to scrap this whole thing and pretend it never happened, which is something that I would also like to do for the month of June as a whole. So for the month of July, I actually don't think I have anything planned. I don't think I'm taking part in any readathons, and if I am, they are going to be very short ones, like maybe a 48 or 24 hour readathon. I don't have anything major planned. I think in the month of July, in terms of reading in general, I'm going to be trying to get back into the swing of things, get my mojo back after everything that has happened in June. And I do think I, I may actually read a lot in July, because I think for a lot of the month, I'm going to be tied to home and not being able to go out for a significant amount of time. So I don't really have much better to do apart from read really. So let us get straight into our first roll. Okay, so last month we ended on four of you. First roll. Is he seven? And that is a chance card. Oh no. The 100 by Cass Morgan. So for roll number one, we landed on a chance card and as far as chance cards go, this one was not a good one because we got the 100 by Cass Morgan. My chance cards are an equal mix of books that I'm desperate to read right now and books that I've had for a really long time that I'm not as excited about anymore. And this is one of the latter. It is also one of the books that are on my unhaul cart because I've had this for a really long time. I bought it with the intention of watching the TV show. I never did and this has just languished on my shelves for a good couple of years. I know very little about this one as well, but I believe that it is set in the future and Earth pretty much died in a nuclear war. So humans have been living in spaceships above the planet for however many years and 100 juvenile delinquents are sent down to Earth to recolonize and discover whether it is possible now after all these years for humans to live on Earth again. Roll number two is a double and that is a two and that one is science fiction. Our second roll was a double great and we landed on sci-fi so for this one i'm finally going to be reading ready player two by ernest klein this is the unnecessary sequel to one of my favorite books which is ready player one and it is a virtual reality sci-fi where the earth is a terrible terrible place to live so the majority of the population plug into this virtual reality called the oasis where you can do pretty much whatever you want and it's like a paradise so the creator of the oasis died quite a number of years before the start of the story but he did leave an easter egg hunt within the oasis and whoever managed to solve all of the clues would inherit the control of the oasis and all of this guy's estate. So it's been many many years and still nobody has found any of these easter eggs until our main character stumbles upon one which causes a whole ton of people to then begin the chase to solve all of the clues and win the prize. I absolutely adored Ready Player One, it is one of my favourite books ever. I have not heard good things about this. I didn't think that Ready Player One needed a sequel but because it has one I am going to read it and I do hope I enjoy it at least a little bit. Roll number three. Is he three? 
fantasy. For roll number three, we landed on fantasy. So, of course, Golden Fool by Robin Hobb is going back on the TBR. This is my book club's book from May and June. The live show for this we have not set, but I think it's going to be on the 9th or the weekend of the 9th, the Sunday of that weekend, essentially. And this one is the second book in the Tawny Man trilogy. So the Tawny Man trilogy is the second trilogy that follows Fitz within the realm of the Elderlings. It is the third trilogy overall, and it is a continuation of the main character of the first trilogy story. So I can't tell you anything about this series, really. But in the realm of the Elderlings as a whole, we start off with this young boy called Fitz, who has been dropped on the doorstep of the keep by his maternal grandfather, who would like him to return to his father. Now, Fitz is actually the bastard son of the prince in waiting, Prince Chivalry, and when Prince Chivalry finds out that his son is on his way to him, he very quickly abdicates the throne and moves to the countryside. So this leaves Fitz in a very awkward position. He's only six years old and nobody really wants to accept responsibility for him. So he is mainly raised by the stable master of the keep up until he reaches an age where he starts to draw the attention of the king, who thinks that Fitz would make a really great assassin for the crown, as he is in a position where he is part of the nobility, but also part of the common people. So I read the first book in this series in May, Fool's Errand. I sobbed. It absolutely destroyed me. This is a very sad series as a whole, like the whole realm of the Eldlings, but especially the Fitz books. So I'm wondering where it's going to go from here. I don't think the book I read is the saddest in the series, so we are going to have quite a few low points, but I'm very excited to rejoin these characters because this, like Robin Hobb, is now one of my favourite authors, and I'm also thoroughly enjoying the realm of the Eldlings. Roll number four is a six and that is a community shelf card oh and that is a five star prediction for roll number four we landed on community shelf and the card that we got was five star prediction this is the prompt that i asked my patrons to pick for the month because the majority of my five star predictions are all the first book in a series and ideally i would not like to be starting any series at this moment so i thought this would be a good one to have somebody else pick for me so i gave my patrons four options and i have three five star prediction videos on my channel and i have not completed a single one of them so I picked one book from each of those videos and then added a random one that I also think is going to be a five star prediction that was not featured in any of those videos so the random one that I added was actual Eve Each Brown by Talia Hibbert this one is an adult contemporary romance and the last book in the Brown Sisters series from the first five star prediction video we had Fallen Kingdoms by Morgan Rhodes this one is a young adult multi-perspective high fantasy from the second five star prediction video I added Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. This one is young adult in the US but adult in the UK and it is a portal fantasy I believe. And the final one that I added was from this year's five star prediction video and that one is Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Ames and I believe that this one is a really funny adult high fantasy. So I actually think thought that the winner of this was going to be Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor but surprisingly the winner of the poll with about 40% was actual age Eve Brown. So I don't read a whole ton of contemporary romance but I have started recently and I have been thoroughly enjoying this series. It is very very funny, very smutty, smuttier than I thought it was going to be and the humour in here is very reminiscent of like an adult version of the Georgie Nicholson series. I have buddy read all of the books in this series with Simon from Savage Reads and I am also going to be buddy reading this final book with him. I'm not actually too sure what the core plot of this one is but it is following the youngest sister Eve and I think the main trope that we're following in this one is hate to love. Roll number five is a five and that is my most recent purchase. So roll number five was most recent purchase and I was really really excited when this prompt came up because the last book to arrive on my doorstep was Realm Breaker by Victoria Aveyard. This is Victoria Aveyard's 2021 release. Red Queen is one of my favourite series. I was really excited to get this onto a TBR but then approximately 30 minutes before I started filming this video, something that I ordered around a month ago 
arrive. So we're going to be reading that instead. <laughs> and that one is Red Rising by Pierce Brown. This is the Fairy Loot Special Edition. They restocked it when they did the Fairy Tro sale. I think it was at the end of May. And I was so, so happy to get my hands on these. It's something that I wasn't interested in when they originally went on sale because I haven't read the series. But I absolutely love this stunning design. And when they are all together, the spines make up a scythe. So I knew that I had to jump on this chance and hope <laughs> that I actually enjoyed this series. So now that these books have just arrived, I guess we're gonna find out. So I know very little about this one, but it is an adult sci-fi series. And I think the main character is a guy called Darrow. In this world, we have a caste system and I think the golds are like at the top and the reds are at the bottom. And this could be wrong, so don't quote me on it. But I believe that the reds think that they are mining and working for this really valuable resource that will help everybody out, but they are actually being treated essentially as slaves. And I think it is a revolution plot line. I'm really excited to read this one. People whose reviews and opinions I really trust really, really love this. And I've been excited to get to it for a very long time. Just haven't picked it up, but now is finally my chance. And we have a very sci-fi heavy TBR now with hardly any fantasy on it. And what will hopefully be our final roll, roll number six, is a seven. And that is a book for a video project. And the final roll, roll number six, landed on video project. And this is a little bit of an interesting one this time. This space just means read a book towards a particular video I would like to make. Now I'm not going to tell you what video this is going to be, but I think you're pretty much going to be able to guess in just a moment. But the book I'm going to be reading for this is A Torch Against the Night by Sabah Tahir. This is the second book in the Ember in the Ashes series. And you may be thinking, but Becca, you haven't read an Ember in the Ashes. You are very right, I haven't, and I don't actually know too much about what an Ember in the Ashes is about, aside from that I think it follows a girl who goes undercover in this military academy, possibly to overthrow it, and she meets a boy there, and she's assumed that everyone's evil, but this boy doesn't want to be in the military academy. It's supposed to be really good, a ton of people really, really love it, but yeah, the second book in the series is going to be going on to my TBR. So that is it for the Bacopoly portion of my TBR, but I have just a couple of books to add. The first one is An Ember in the Ashes by Sabah Tahir. This one was my Patreon Inner Circle book draw pick for June. It was Farina's pick. I have pushed this back into July for a specific reason. I mean, I was going to be pushed to get to it, so I decided to push it into July because I wanted to read it for a video project, which by now you guys may be able to guess what that video project is. The second one is a maybe because I haven't spoken to Cassie, but I may be reading One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. This was gifted to me for my birthday or pre-ordered for my birthday by the lovely Cassie from Sassy Cassie and Cassie and I also decided that we would be buddy reading this one. So I only know the vague bare bones of the plot of this one but it is a new adult contemporary romance with a sci-fi twist and it features a female female relationship except one of the people in this relationship is trapped on a train in a different decade, I think. And then the final book I'm going to be adding to my TBR is my Inner Circle draw pick for the month. My Inner Circle Patreon tiers get to recommend me a book and every month I pull one out of this jar and I have to add it to my TBR. So, I'm a little bit scared of this because at the six month point, which was the end of June, the people in my inner circle who had already had their books picked got to add another one back in. So this jar is now really full and there are some like quite nice ones in here, but there's also, there's a couple of absolute beasts that have gone in here, adding on to the absolute beasts that were already in. Just gonna give them a mix up because all of the new ones are currently sitting on the top. And let's just get this over with, shall we? I'm scared. I'm gonna go with this one and this one is oh bone witch by Rinch Pecco, which is Vicky's recommendation. So this one is the first book in a young adult fantasy series, and I do kind of know very little about this one, but I believe it follows a bone witch, and bone witches are necromancers, and they are ostracized from their community. Really excited that this one came up, one, because it is like quite a small pick, and two, because it is one that I have wanted to get to for quite some time. So this one is gonna be added to my July TBR, which I have a suspicion normally I've already 
already calculated my pages, made the TBR pretty manageable. This month I, I have not done that. So I'm a little bit nervous about what this is gonna be when we add it all up and hold it up because I think it's a pretty big stack. Okay, so this is my stack for July. It is quite large as I anticipated it being, but I've done the numbers and it's not as bad as I anticipated it being. So my core book Copley TBR adds up to 2,500 pages. Five out of the six books I'm going to be reading for my core book Copley TBR are between 350 and 450 pages, which isn't too bad at all with the exception being Golden Fool by Robin Hobb. And all of that lot, to complete all of that lot in July, I only have to read 81 pages per day. Then when you add the three extras, onto the stack, it comes up to 3,800 pages, which is approximately 125 pages per day. So I'm actually a little bit more optimistic about this than I was when I was just haphazardly throwing books onto my TBR. I definitely think this is doable. However, these are definitely not the only books that I plan to read in July. I have that video project that I'm working on, which I would like to do in the month of July. And I do actually think that we're gonna have some interesting vlogs this month based on this stack. We have a whole ton of sci-fi in here. We have a little bit of contemporary romance and some of the fantasy on here is a little bit new to me, like reading some of Booktube's most beloved series. So there you have it. Those are all of the books that I'm going to be reading in the month of July, or at least all of the books that I have to read in the month of July. Down in my comments, please let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought about them. Also, let me know which book on your July TBR is the one that you are most excited to read. But aside from that, guys, please don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna. If you head to my description box, you'll find a link to my Goodreads Instagram and Twitter if you'd like to follow me on any of those, as well as a link to my Bookish Candle website, the Instagram for that, and a 10% off discount code. But that's it from me today, guys. Bye! Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate you say you're a go where nobody knows With guns hidden under our petticoats We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no